know, making this film was really like, you know, making a, a film with your friends and your family, you know, and, and everybody's uh, ready to get up and start shooting at the most bizarre hours, whether or not it's on a call sheet. You know, I had to, I was in an acting class at the time, Bill Esper's class, and I was on my way to class uh, when unexpectedly it started snowing in New York and and Alex is like, we've got to use the snow. It's so beautiful. We've got to go use the snow. And, and so I ditched my class and my character was supposed to have long hair and my hair was pretty short at the time and I hadn't gotten um, the extensions put in for the character yet, but I said, oh, you know, if I put it up, nobody will ever know, you know, how long or how short it is. And so that's when we shot the sequence on the roof. It's the one moment when my character, Angelica, is just fully free and fully alive and has sort of dropped all of the anger and all of the resentment and stuff that a, a city can place on you, and especially being an immigrant in a large city can place on you. And then it's just, you know, it's just freedom. It was just total freedom. I think that's, for, for me, why that sequence on the roof is so lovely. Steve is just so uh, full of life and is so excited about life and about making films and uh, that it's infectious. And he and Alex work so well together. They're a very, very good team. I mean, I remember before um, we started shooting, you know, we had the financing and literally, I think, three days or something before we were going to start shooting, we lost the financing. And, and I remember Steve coming over and Steve and, and Alex were drinking vodka and playing ping pong because we had a ping pong table in our house. And, and I just started vacuuming, like I just started vacuuming like crazy and I really hate cleaning, but I, I vacuum, I think, under duress. <laughs> And uh, they were trying to figure out a way to put the financing back together, and, and Alex did within three days, pretty much. I think, is that true? Well, he did really quickly. I mean, probably within a week or two. So it was pretty um, extraordinary. Because he's the writer, he has the blueprint in front of him, but he's not somebody who uh, needs to control everything. He knows that whether it's intellectually or instinctually, that you have to go jump off the cliff now. And he does it so willingly. It's not, uh, it's not something that he thinks twice about. And, and he will ask other people their opinions, though it's always clear on the set that he's the captain of the ship. I mean, it's, you know, you, you feel in his life, I think that he carries certainly the most authority um, when he's on the set. He feels so at home on the set. You know, he's just completely in his element, I think, when he's on the set. When he's writing, it is maddening to be in the house because he's constantly rewriting and asking you to read it. And if you're not laughing hysterically within two words, like he thinks something's wrong with it, and you just try to explain, you know, can you let me get past the first paragraph so I can really give you my comment. Um, so he's, he's uh, very dedicated at writing and rewriting and making sure that everything is truthful and not, he's not married to some um, path that the script must take. He knows that it's an organic process, so it's, it takes a little bit of time. But then when he's on the set, it's like a kid in the candy store. You know, he's completely, uh, it seems like he's completely uh, relaxed in, in his element and, and, uh, and just fed by adrenaline. And he loves actors so much. He loves them and he loves uh, humanity so much. You know, it's really not about, oh, let's make this so technically interesting. Let's make this so intellectually, academically interesting. Because all that stuff falls away. And at the end of the day, I think he knows that what you have is your relationship to another human being. And that's what's interesting. And that's what makes it exciting to be alive. Well, Seymour is like kind of like you know, he's kind of like that crazy uncle that every family has and, and you know, you're, you love him but you're kind of terrified when he comes over because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, but you know that, well, for example, I was in L.A. and 
I, uh, somebody had broken into my yard and I was terrified and it was three o'clock in the morning and I was by myself and I called Seymour because I knew that Seymour would help me and he would take care of me and he's the person that will embarrass you at the party um, by flirting outrageously with, you know, uh, every woman that walks by and you just want to hide because it's just, just over the top but he's also the guy that you will call in the middle of the night to come help you and he'll be there to help you and he's amazing um, and as an actor he's just you know I think that everything that you are informs your acting and and uh, and Seymour has just lived such an intense life that it gives uh, an incredible immediacy to his characters and 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 the things that he improvises are really fantastic. And he, he's infuriating too, I mean, don't get me wrong, he's like totally, totally infuriating because sometimes he won't stop with the mischief, you know, the, the, the uh, mischief. Um, there was this, there's a scene outside an elevator and uh, I'm really angry with, with um, Steve's character and, and, and angry with Seymour's character and I was so tired. I was really tired. And I remember just before we did the take, I think Seymour pushed me. Like, he pushed me. And I wanted to rip his head off. I remember, because it's just like the mischief wouldn't stop. And it was really helpful to me. And I realized that um, he was trying to help me. You know, that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to help me. And, and uh, it was great. It was really sweet. My mom, I think this is true, my mother, in order to f help finance the film, uh, gave us her pension money. She took her money out of her pension plan and gave the money for the, so, some of the financing for the film, you know, which is an incredible gesture of good faith. Gosh, I just remembered that. I wonder if Alex has paid her back. Hi, Ma. It's going well. I just I'm on camera and I have a quick question to ask you. Okay, and in the soup, you gave Alex some of your pension money, right, for the financing? But you got paid back, right? Oh, okay. I'm just checking because I couldn't remember. I could Oh, I think that's Alex calling me on the other line. Hello. Okay, it's Alex. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> okay, good. All right, bye. Uh, so it wasn't my mother's pension. It was money that they had in the bank, that she and my stepfather had in the bank, and they did get paid back. I think it was the first time that I really got to play a character. I didn't have to play, you know, the chick who looked good in a bustier or something. You know, it was really, it was fun in that way because I got to do something totally different. And I didn't have to hear myself talk. I could get to hear another accent. It was very freeing. It was an amazing festival. Alison Andrews was there and Robert Rodriguez was there and Quentin was there with Reservoir Dogs and we were there with In the Soup and and Alex and Quentin became really good friends from that festival, and and Allison became friends with everybody at that festival, and and it just these were all just people were really who were really excited about filmmaking, and I don't think I mean we didn't I don't know I didn't even think about the possibility of winning the prize I mean it just would be shocking. And I, I, it was just such a huge moment when the film won the prize. It just was huge because it meant uh, that it would have a life outside of the festival and that other people would get to see it. 